let's take a look at the um, knee joint here. First of all, you can appreciate how this long piece of connective tissue essentially holds the patella in place. The patella then would be a sesamoid bone. This is a patella by itself right here. You can see this. And I can tell whether it's a right or left patella by taking the point or the apex of the patella, pointing that away from me. I'll do this away from the camera like this, huh? And then seeing which, which side it falls to. In this particular case, it's fallen to the left side, and so this would be a left patella. You can also appreciate how this rough surface here is the anterior surface. The smooth surface is the posterior surface. So to tell right and left, basically what you do is take the patella, turn it with the apex away from you, and make sure you've got the, the anterior side up. All right, good. Now, the connective tissue that the patella rests in actually has two names. And that's because this first part comes from the quadriceps muscles. And so we call this the quadriceps tendon. Remember, a tendon connects muscle to bone, but from bone to bone is a ligament. And so from the patella down is the patellar ligament. So the quadriceps tendon and the patellar ligament. Okay, let's take a look inside of this joint. You can appreciate the anterior cruciate ligament. I'm kind of probing right there. Anterior cruciate ligament. And this one, of course, is going into that intercondylar fossa of the femur, uh, in between the uh, intercondylar tubercles. And then this white structure here are the menisci. There is the medial meniscus associated with the tibia and then the lateral meniscus, which is also still on the tibia, but it's associated with the fibula. Remember the term fibula has an L in it, and so lateral and fibula go together because they both have Ls. You can also see here, this is the medial collateral ligament on the tibia side, and the lateral collateral ligament on the fibula side. You can also call this the fibula, fibular collateral, collateral ligament and you can call this the tibial collateral ligament. Okay, let's take a look at the back. Let's see what we have here. Once again, this is the lateral meniscus. And notice that a bit of the lateral meniscus comes right on into that intercondylar fossa. So this whole structure would then be the lateral meniscus. This is, of course, the posterior, actually, I'm sorry, this is the anterior cruciate ligament from the rear and this is the posterior cruciate ligament from the rear. So anterior cruciate ligament, lateral meniscus, posterior cruciate ligament. Okay, good. Got these joints. Right here, of course, this is again the knee joint. And we're gonna look at some different structures on the femur and also on the tibia in the general region of these joints. So let's look at the posterior uh, femur first and the, um, let's see, this would be the posterior side right here, okay, posterior femur. These are the condyles and you can appreciate how this is the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. We also have epicondyles. So the lateral condyle has the lateral epicondyle associated with it. The medial condyle has the medial epicondyle associated with it. And then in between, kind of where this bar is, this little notch, is the intercondylar fossa. Um, you can also see the popliteal surface right back here. And then these are the supracondylar ridges. Again, this is the lateral supracondylar ridge and the medial supracondylar ridge is here. This line that they've kind of blend into is called the linea aspera. Okay, let's work our way more toward the proximal end. And the linea aspera breaks into two lines. This line here is called the pectinate line. This one is called the gluteal line. The gluteal line is, or gluteal tuberosity, I should say. The gluteal tuberosity is associated with the gluteus maximus muscle, point of insertion. And then here is the greater trochanter, a very, very important point of insertion for the lateral rotators, as well as the many of the gluteus muscles. And then here is the um, lesser trochanter, which is the point of insertion for the psoas muscles, 
In between we have the inner trochanteric crest, which is associated with the quadriceps femoris. You also see the neck of the femur, as well as the head of the femur. Spin it around this way, you can see, say, the patellar surface. This is the patellar surface right here. You can see the patellar surface. Now, this region here, kind of between the trochanters, is called the intertrochanteric line. So you have the intertrochanteric line versus the big, broad intertrochanteric crest. Take a look at some of the structures of the coxa, which are the pelvic bones. So this is, of course, the lateral portion of it. We know that because the head of the femur is plugging into this fossa. And this fossa is called the acetabulum. So the head of the femur goes into the acetabulum. This hole here is the largest hole in the body. It's called the obturator foramen, and it is plugged by obturator muscles. We'll talk about those soon. This is the ischial tuberosity, and this is the ischial spine. So the two of them kind of delineate a bone called the ischium. So the ischium starts about here, comes down, about midway, right about here perhaps, maybe a little further in, and this is called the ischial ramus. Now here we have the two rami of the pubis, this is the pubic bone here. So this is the superior ramus and the inferior ramus. This marks the place of the symphysis pubis. And then this is sometimes called the pubic crest or um, we could call it the arcuate line. The arcuate line is going to travel up to this great big bone, which we see here and here, and that is referred to as, as the ilium. All right, now this is the um, interior surface, the interior surface, and so you can see that this is the iliac fossa here. This line is the iliopectinate line. And then this kind of smooth region here, is called the auricular surface. This is where it's going to be articulating with the sacrum. Um, if we go to the other side, let's see if I can spin this model around Oops, a little bit. We can see, um, actually we don't see this well, but right here would be the posterior gluteal line. The anterior gluteal line would be about right here. And then right about this region here is the posterior gluteal line. Now these gluteal lines are associated with gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, and gluteus minimus. Lastly, we have the spines of the uh, ilium. And we have to name them first, whether they're anterior or posterior. And then we have to say whether they're superior or inferior. So this is the superior spine, this is the inferior spine, right? And it's anterior, and so we're going to call this the anterior superior iliac spine and the anterior inferior iliac spine. This is the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine tibia here. This is the tibial tuberosity. And then unlike the other bones that we've taken a look at, uh, the condyles of the tibia are actually rough surfaces. Remember that lateral goes together with um, the fibula. So this is the lateral condyle of the tibia and this is the medial condyle of the tibia. This is the anterior tibial crest right here, this sharp area in front. And on the base here is the, is the malleolus, specifically the medial malleolus. This is your ankle, medial malleolus. You take a look at the surfaces, and this may be a little awkward. Let's see what we can do. You can appreciate that these are simply articulating surfaces then. So the smooth surfaces are not condyles, they're articulating surfaces. And then in between are the intercondylar tubercles of the tibia. And of course, this is where the uh, anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments uh, travel, right, in between these. This is the head of the fibula, right here. And if we travel down the fibula, all the way down, we see another malleolus. This is on the lateral side. So this is the lateral malleolus. 